Welcome in, guys. Happy Monday. Big weekend. Over seven units on Saturday, Sunday. Had a big day Thursday as well. And a big week overall up over 15 units. Crushed it with the NBA. Crushed it with the baseball. Four and four week on the MLB, but big time dogs. You guys know what that means. Puts us in the green. Uh, we got no bets out yet so far for today. We do have one bet out for our members for one of the NBA games tomorrow. If you guys want that, sign up on MassaEdge.com or download the Massa Edge app. We'll run through the whole slate as always, giving you guys our leans and reads. Uh, but John first is talking a little bit about this weekend. A lot of action going on. And how about that Minnesota Timberwolves getting the first sweep so far of the first round? Really only the first only sweep if OKC doesn't get it done. Um Goodbye, Big Three, KD, Booker, Beal. We said that right from Jump Street, day one. Not going to work. Need a point guard. So Booker could get his 40 and 50, and KD, you've got to have a real point guard. Look at Conley by contrast last night. Yep. Let me just pull up the Bosco, guys. Give me a sec. So um, I want you all guys to understand there's more to look at than just um, – who, who scored how many points, how many assists. So in the game last night, uh, let me just pull this up. Sorry, guys. A little slow on the on the drawer here after a celebration uh, Monday. So we get Conley last night. He goes two for 10 shooting, um, two knocks down, two three-pointers. He was a game high plus 16 for the Timberwolves when he was on the court. That's when you've got – your commander on the court, your point guard, your guy that runs the show, your guy that puts everybody in the right spot. And that's just what uh, Phoenix didn't have. You take Booker, he 49 points in 45 minutes. He's just a plus one. And KD, 33 points. He's a minus seven while he's on the court. And you look at it long enough, that's going to show up that plus or minus. If you've been following the show, we talked about all yeah how OG – since he came to the Knicks, what he's brought to the Knicks, always get that plus, or one of the better pluses. And now in that Knicks series, you just look when Embiid's on the court, when Embiid's off the court. And how about Joel Embiid playing the entire second half uh, yesterday's game? Uh, so you'd say, hey, that's great, but he goes the entire second in the fourth quarter, 0 for 5 in field goal scores just one point. So you're going to play that much, you're going to tie it down a stretch, uh, 76 is one of the weaker benches, and that's starting to catch up to them. But when he's on the court, he does what he does. Uh, he commands that double team. So that's, that's a lot of other things. His stats might suffer, not look great, as we're talking about Conley. But having that that floor general, <clears throat> excuse me, on the court. What's well, uh... we do it all the time? You, you guys know personally, I don't like Dre Green. I don't like his antics. But the guy goes out there and gives you six points, eight boards, seven assists, a couple of steals and a play. He he just gets it done, and he's a plus something each time. You know, go back to my day, and you get a, a, a point guard like Jason Kidd. Guy could go score zero, two, four points, and literally control the game. Uh, Phoenix didn't have that, and they're gone fishing. It's over. Four zero sweep. Um, this is. Just remember, Phoenix had won 10 of 11 meetings coming into this series. Uh, we quickly learned after the first couple of games in that series, stayed off of it the rest of the way, although all the metrics told us, Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. And sometimes it's the eye test, and it just you just knew they could not stand up. Look, Minnie's big. Uh, Gobert and Cat, and they just dominated them on the board. They just dominated them every way they could. Uh, Phoenix couldn't get it done. So they're out. Uh, our winner yesterday was uh, two winners, uh, Philly and Clippers. Excuse me, Knicks and Clippers. Sorry to all my Philly guys. We made up for it, though, because we came on the Philadelphia Phillies as a dog to keep it going, and they got it going. So two basketball games, Knicks-Philly, that series. We've been on the road team. Uh, both, the home teams are, are constantly in that four, four-and-a-half point range, and I just don't feel either of those teams – uh, four points or more better on their home court. Uh, both teams play well on the road. And, again, know how close uh, these these two arenas are. And for you guys, I'm sure you guys have all seen it on uh, the reels and Instagram and everything, uh, the, the Nick fans literally yeah. taking over 
Philly uh, booing Joel Embiid late in the game in a crucial free throw that he that he actually missed. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll give you that in a minute. But that was the other game we won. We took the Knicks, uh, win that outright uh, plus the four and a half points in that game. We took the Clippers. We were waiting on that. So we had one of our guys in the chat say. Uh, no bets yet. I, maybe it was around 12 o'clock or 11th or whatever it was. We wait. We wait for lines. We wait for info. We strike while the iron's hot. We were waiting for the iron to get hot. So we we're waiting in that particular game for Kawhi to get announced out. Once he got announced out, the line goes up to seven. Didn't need the seven. Another dog outright winner. Uh, Clippers playing better. Without Kawhi, you want to take that, Ben? Start explaining how that's possible. Yeah, Clippers without Kawhi. I mean, it's once sometimes when you have a guy who's been out for so long, it throws everyone else off. I mean, down the stretch of the season, Harden and PG got really good chemistry going together. Uh, throws things out of sync, and then also it's just not quite the same defensively. Defense in the NBA is a physical effort thing. You see it in Luka Doncic. I mean, he's been putting that physical effort in, gets better on that side of the ball. Uh, takes away a little bit from the other side of the ball. But when you're not 100% health-wise and you've been missing time, uh, that effort, the extra steps, the the quick boosts and side jumps, all that, uh, you're going to be losing an edge on that. So both sides of the ball, he's been shrugging a little bit. Not the same vintage Kawhi Leonard. And that's kind of what we've been seeing all, all season long, a little bit, or all series long, excuse me. Uh, we knew coming in that he was going to be missing at least one game. And now he's missed two, and that's just but been – Kawhi Leonard's history with the Clippers in the playoffs. He's just never healthy. And I would sit him um, until he's 100% because right now he all he's doing is hurting the team. Yep. So Clippers now, um, three they were three and four, one and six in the last seven games that Kawhi played that meant something. Remember, the last three games of the regular season, they locked in the fourth seed. They sat pretty much everybody. So take those three games out of it. The other uh, last seven games that really meant something, three and four, one and six against the spread with Kawhi in the lineup, with him out. Well, they've just won every game. That's what's happening right now with Kawhi Leonard. He's actually hurting the team. Um, yes, if Kawhi was at full strength and he plays a couple of games, he will hope that Clipper team that, look, earlier in the year, we thought that this might be the team to beat, but we qualified it. If Kawhi and PG are healthy, and obviously Kawhi's not. But we waited till uh, that line went up to seven. It went up to seven. We hit that. As I had told you guys, um, my Mass Edge members know in the preview, right after that second game, when everybody started talking about Luca as a shutdown, yeah, he did a great job defensively. But I said, you're going to put in 40-plus minutes on the defensive end. That offense is going to suffer, and that's what's going on right now. Luca's shooting under 40%. One for nine from three yesterday, and uh, Kyrie was there to pick up the slack with 40. Look, they almost did it. They almost – a 31-point depth. They had that lead at one point. To come back and take a lead. PG actually yeah. makes a crazy shot, or things could have turned out differently. But we'll take those two dubs and our big winner this weekend, three-unit, easy. I mean, OKC, man, but the stats don't lie. The trend is your friend. We tell you guys that all the time. So, Thunder – Thunder are the best shooting team right now uh, in the playoffs, shooting the best three-point percent. Pelicans are shooting the worst field goal percent, uh, the second-worst three-point percent. Pelicans, most turnovers. I mean, what else can you say? I told you the Pelicans cannot keep up scoring with the Thunder, and they can't right now. Pelican, uh, the Thunder own the Pelicans and own them, absolutely own them. It's like they go to their house, bang their wives, Take their kid's fucking Xbox. Ten, it's nine and one. Uh, the last ten, ten and zero against the spread, and that's that's just your ownership. And we went from a we laid that money line minus one fifteen. That game is five today, so you can see that everybody figures it's a pack in job for a Pelican team. Not going to get it done without Zion. So a nice clean sweep this weekend. NBA finally going the way it's supposed to be going. Uh, baseball, all we do is hit fifty percent. Bet. Tell everybody what happens when you hit 50% in dogs. Yep, absolutely. In the green, some big dogs this weekend. Oakland yesterday getting it done. The big home run from McCann in the top of the ninth, getting it done at Baltimore. Uh, and really all throughout the weekend, getting some big plus money. Washington taking care of business in a couple of games for us. We'll see if we can continue that on uh, 
I Robin just got to and I got to lift because I, I got a couple of guys that, that, that DM'd, oh, you got lucky in the Oakland game. Yeah, but how about all the times we get unlucky? I mean, you I can't win with you guys. Um, follow the method 162 times. Remember, there's a the win probability chart. Out of 162 times, Oakland is not going to lose 162. They're going to come up with a game like this. And, yes, sometimes it's going to be with a homer in the night. Look, Baltimore in trouble uh, with the relief pen. Um Lose your closer from last year. Kimball, he ain't going to get it done. Second blown save this weekend, and he left the game right after he gave up the home run. Looks like that's a little injury situation. We'll talk more about that when we come over to Yankees. But, yeah, a nice little split. I'll take 50% on dogs all day long, especially when our dogs are plus 178s. And uh, Phillies, I just thought, was a steal yesterday. This is what we'd say it all the time. The do to win. San Diego's due to win one at home. San Diego's not going to get swept at home. Philly's not going to win another one on the road. Then Philly's not going to win 162 or 81 straight on the road. But they can still win that game. And that price just was ridiculous yesterday for a red hot hitting Philly team against a San Diego team not hitting a lick. So that was a nice, uh, nice plus 132. So again, for my Philly guys out there. We won both ways with Philly. Unfortunately, 76ers didn't get it done, but Philly, uh, Philadelphia Phillies did. We can start breaking down this slate going on today, guys. Obviously, a really good weekend, really good week. Let's see if we can continue that on. And so far, like I said, no bets today, but obviously always watching lines and injury updates. Could be bets added later on in the day. Start the day. Before we get started, I just want to say this. Um, really solid numbers. Only a couple of numbers have moved big time off the overnight uh, those being the Orioles that we just talked about, losing their clothes are probably not them for today. And the Yankees just going buck wild uh, in Milwaukee the last two days, uh, busting out the whooping sticks. Uh, and the other game that, that has gone tremendously down is the Arizona Diamondbacks against uh, the, the Dodgers. Um, and as we get to those games, we'll tell you more about why we didn't have war, why I didn't bet on either of those games. Those are pretty much outside of those two games. Those are really the only two major moves off the overnight. Although right now, as we're speaking, Mets are starting to climb up, up to $1.50 and higher. That game opened one thirty, and we'll tell you why that game's moving. We got this uh, NBA slate, guys, going on today. Three sets of games. You got Boston with the 2-1 lead, Thunder with the 3-0 lead, and Denver with the 3-1 lead. We can go ahead and start breaking these down. Celtics' second game here at Miami, 4-4. <laughs> four four. Uh, after losing in game two at home, embarrassingly, they step up. Big game three performance. Uh, we'll see if they can kind of put an edge on this series. Another big double-digit favorite here, as they should be. I mean, this is... A one seed, the best team in the, in the best team in basketball versus an eight seed missing their best player in Jimmy Butler. So uh, double digit lines are warranted. Can Boston get it done though? Live and die by the three, and they died in game two. They won in game three. Can they get it going here in game four? That's really all that matters uh, is the three point shot for both teams in this game. Um, Got to be a lean here to Miami. I mean, protecting home court, not necessarily to win another game in this series, but to keep this one within reach. Got absolutely embarrassed in game three. This game would be Miami or nothing. John's had a couple of first half bets in this series. Could be a look at this one here today again. Yeah. Well, um, after getting, uh, we, we bet the first half of Miami in the first game. Just thought Boston might come out a little rusty with that long layoff. They had locked things up. Uh, for two weeks, they were playing all games that meant nothing, so really mailing it in. Uh, hard to flip the switch, but they did. It scored the first 14 points, not rusty at all, and they got the job done on the Heat. Uh, after watching that, Coach Spo, who I, I really regard as the man, the best NBA coach right now, you knew that was not going to happen again. We took the Heat in the first half in game two. Well, they didn't only win the first half. They shot the shit out of the Celtics in Boston. Boston had only lost four times all year there. Um, then they come back to Miami. Boston comes back. He is pinned, pissed off. They get a big W, easy, up by 24 at halftime, and they coast. It's it's Coach Spoh's turn again now. Uh, big number up there. I needed it to be just a little bit higher, but to me it would have to be the heat or anything. This whole series is, as Ben said, it's all about the three-pointers. Celtics led the NBA with 16 and a half three-pointers made. 
uh, per game during the regular season. They're hitting 15 per game, shooting approximately the same percent at 38 uh, percent. It's the Miami Heat who don't normally shoot the three really well. They've hit 40.7 percent. Um, <coughs> just they did last one, year too. Just one three pointer. Uh, less than the, the Celtics in the three games. Now, can the Heat keep that up? No, I don't believe they can. That's that's it right there. Uh, this game's going to be one at all loss. It's going to be decided at the three-point line. Tell me how good the three the teams are going to shoot from three. I'll tell you who win this game. It's got to be Heat or nobody. Uh, if they continue to shoot this pace from three, they'll challenge the Celtics in this game. If not, if they fall back to where they are, things resume up. The Celtics should get another another victory. We have Thunder at Pelicans in the second game going tonight. OKC went on in. As you guys know, our big three unit winner the other night, take game three. Uh, this Pelicans team just toast. I mean, you have Ingram who had the injury down the stretch of the season. He still doesn't look right. Obviously, without Zion, it's just not the same Pelicans team. Healthy Pelicans team, I think, would have given a strong fight in this series. I think we saw glimpses of that in game one. Uh, but that's kind of all they fight they had in this series. Big number here. A uh, bit of an overlay almost, just an overreaction to what we saw in game three. And it's warranted. New Orleans looks out of it. They look checked out. Uh, would be OKC or nobody. I'm not looking to lay this price. I uh, will say, though, you might have New Orleans. Kind of what we saw last night from Phoenix show up in the first half, try to avoid the sweep. Might be able to catch a better halftime price here for the Thunder to close out the series in four games. Thunder owns them. We talked about this already. They own them. They're beating them in every way, every way possible. Line's gone from uh, one, one and a half, two at some spots, closing uh, on game three. It's sitting at five now. It's thunder and nobody. We got Lakers at Nuggets. Lakers take game four to avoid the sweep. And you got Jamal Murray who got banged up in that game. Could be some problems here for Denver. He already hasn't been playing the best in this series. Uh, he had that injury at the end of the regular season. He re-aggravated that in game three. And then you have some of these other role players, Michael Porter and Aaron Gordon, who were really huge in games two and three, uh, kind of fell off in that last game. What are you going to get out of them tonight? For all intents and purposes, I mean, Lakers have more or less dominated this series. They've led for 75% of the series, 136 minutes. They've been within it. Uh, three of the four games have been decided under the seven and a half number. Uh, it would be Lakers or nothing for me. About 100% Jamal Murray. He's very similar to what we talked about with Kawhi Leonard. If he plays tonight on a bummed leg, could be more harm than good. Uh, would be interesting to see what this price looks like with him out. But if he does, if he does play on the court, it would be Lakers or nothing for me. Uh, they've been pretty good in this series. They finally snapped that 11-game win streak. I think they at least keep this one close tonight. So this one, first of all, Murray is huge to this uh, to this to this team. Um, uh, Aaron, Aaron Gordon came up huge in one of the games. Porter actually had a, a decent game in game four, also 27 and 10. So I don't want to, I don't want to discount him there. Uh, what I want to say about this entire series. So Lakers, Lakers uh, shot 49.9% during the regular season and they're shooting 49.9% during the postseason uh, or in this series. Denver Nuggets are shooting just 46% this series making only 9.3 three-pointers a game at just 27.6%. And they have a 3-1 lead. Like I said, that's the that's the downfall. Yes, Lakers have had a, have had double-digit leads in all four games. They're out shooting the Nuggets, but the Nuggets keep winning. If the Nuggets play better, they'll blow the Lakers out. Well, the Lakers just happy to break the 10. The, was it an 11-game losing streak that they had to the Nuggets? Can they go to Denver and get a win? They haven't won there in their last seven tries, although they've covered 3-3-1 three, three, and one against the spread in those seven meetings. Seven, I feel, is the right number. Murray, that's the big question. Murray out, this game's going to be looking like five. Uh, this is a flip of the coin game, as I feel this, most of the NBA is tonight. And we can head on over to this baseball slate 12 game Monday. Topped off with a good AL East battle to the better teams in the AL. And this should come down. This uh, division should come down to these two teams, Yankees and Orioles. We'll see what we get tonight. Schmidt versus Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets the pitching edge, but he is coming off his worst start of the season against the Angels, nonetheless. Uh, they'd won his prior four starts, three of those quality starts. And you have Schmidt going. Love this guy. He's just consistent. I mean, even going back to last year, if you go look at his last. 26 starts 
he has allowed three runs or less in 23 of those. So he just keeps you in the game. And with that, Yankees are 5-0 and in his starts this year. Hasn't given up more than three runs in any of them. Uh, and he's gone in about five innings in each of them. So uh, it's consistent. I mean, at least you know what you're getting when you're backing him. And with the way the Yankees offense looked the last two days, it might be enough. We'll see if they can pick it up. 30-8 to eight the last two games at Milwaukee. Uh, Judge homeward in the last two games. He's heating up. We'll see if that continues. Verdugo, he's homeward in the last couple of games. He's heating up. Uh, with the Yankees or nobody here taking a price here. Yes, pitching edge Baltimore, not drastic enough for me to get this price, uh, let alone the opener. Yeah, it would have to be the opener for me, plus 120. The play was the Yankees. Yankees are nobody. Uh, again, that's because you get, a, you get an Oriole team <coughs> in a little problem now in the pen. <clears throat> um, Yankees, again, starting to heat up. <clears throat> Always tough that first day uh, on a Monday when you got the road team uh, coming in, coming off another road trip. And the home team has been home. And the Orioles are in the luxury of waiting at home while the Yankees travel. But, hey, Yankees are nobody in this one. But this line has been has been pretty much crushed where you could have took 120 on the overnight. We're down to plus 105. I don't see any value in that. And then we have Cardinals going on to Detroit. Mats versus Maeda in this one. Mats, he's been hammered his last two starts. 12 runs, 13 hits, and nine and a third. Maeda, he was getting crushed in his first couple of starts. He was better last time out at Tampa. And I don't know if that means too much because Tampa just got shut down by White Sox pitching. So uh, a little bit of a rough go there. We'll see what Maeda brings today. Tigers, not the best at home. They got a little bit better here. And they were taking two out of three against KC. Uh, and then you have Cardinals, who've been heating up a little bit, playing better ball. Uh, had a good road trip there against the Mets. Good series. They could have had the sweep. They're one strike away last night from closing that one out. Give up the hit to Bader. Then the home run from the Mets closes it out. Uh, it would be Cardinals are nothing for me in this one. Like the way they've been playing ball the last couple of days. And uh, we'll see if Mats can get a bounce back here against this Detroit lineup. Yeah, St. Louis actually been playing a little better on the road. We all know Detroit plays better on the road also. So that's why we're looking at a pick em game with the match, my Ada matchup here. Look, don't let this Detroit, don't sleep on this Detroit team. I just don't like them much at home. I like them better on the road. I think the line should be picked. Got two garbage pitches going here, two pretty much inept offenses. Uh, pick them is the right line for me. Unless something drags the cap is, I'll stay off this one. <laughs> Nats at Miami. This is game four of a series you had yesterday. The Nats go down 6-0 early, and it was a gross 6-0 early. I mean, Marlins had three on and a grand slam with the first four batters in the first inning. They didn't have a chance. Come all the way back, win it 12-9. Senzel hits two homers. Uh, we'll see if they can complete the four-game sweep. They've been better on the road. Uh, Miami, now after White Sox sweep Tampa, Miami the worst team in baseball. They had the worst home record at 2-14. and Irvin versus Rogers today. Irvin was pitching good. A couple of quality starts. The second one was against the Dodgers, and then he had to face the Dodgers twice in one week, and that is not a lineup you want to see twice in one week. He got cracked by them the last go around. Uh, and then Rogers. Miami has lost all five of his starts. Last time out, roughed up by the Braves. This is dog or nobody. And Miami is not getting it done. Uh, we'll see if Irvin has a nice little bounce back start here. Yeah, um, I, have, I want nothing to do with Miami. This team is a disaster. They've lost basically their entire pitching staff. Rodgers actually, though, a uh, few good games last year against the Nationals, 3-0, 3.18. Um, Irvin, look, that 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 last start tough, go against the Dodgers twice in a row after blanking them. You knew they were coming to get him that last time. Uh, just it's got to be the dog or nobody in this one. We'll wait to see the lineups on it. This is one of those carryover series from the weekend. See if they're going to give anybody a day rest. But to me, hey, I, I don't want a team that's got the worst record at home in baseball, uh, and they're a favorite. No, I'll be on the Nationals and nobody. Uh, Nationals always seem to get the job done. So I'm going to say always. But get the job done on the road more often than not for us. Especially considering taking a price. We got Royals at Toronto next. They met last week in KC. Royals took three or four in that series. Uh, Royals just not getting it done on the road as much. Five and seven, a lot better pace than their road record last year, uh, but not quite the same team as they are at home. They had a four-game win streak, then they lose the last two at Detroit. Uh, and then Toronto, they were rocking a five-game losing streak. They snapped that yesterday with a 3-1 win over the Dodgers. A couple of young pitchers going. Bolin versus Rodriguez. 
Uh, Boland, he had two outings last year. One was a start, but for a total of three innings pitched. And in AAA this year, he's been decent. 3-1, and 2.57 ERA. He's making his season debut. And Rodriguez, he has had three career starts all this season. Last time out, gave up three runs, six hits, and four innings against the Royals. Going to be seeing them twice in one week. Uh, really don't like when a young pitcher, especially don't like any time backing a pitcher has been seen by the same team twice in one week, let alone a young pitcher. So this is KC or nobody for me. Uh, yes, they've had bad success at Toronto. One in 10, their last 11 games there. Bit of a different Royals team. We'll see if they get it going here today. It's a little bit of a different Royals team. I give that to you, but the same, same old Royals just don't get it done on the road. Uh, let's see what this kid Boland's got in the, uh, in the big leagues now. Rodriguez, first couple outings, I mean, they were okay, but no has, has no no length in the game. It hasn't gone past four innings, and, and you'll look for more of the same again. As Ben said, going to face KC now for the second time. So with Perez, uh, those boys, Melendez, will get a, uh, a second look at him in a row. Uh, I don't make the number this high, but the other thing is the trend. 10-1, and one, the last 11 meetings in Toronto. Don't want to buck that trend. Uh, but not definitely not laying the, the Blue Jays uh, as this high a favorite. Then we have Cubs at the Mets. Cubbies coming off a loss last night to the Red Sox. Lost it in the ninth. It was a tie game. They dropped the last two there. Uh, then you have the Mets coming off a walk-off last night against the Cardinals. Get that one done in the 11th inning. Uh, they snap a little bit of an ice skid. Still 2-5 and five their last seven. Uh, then you have Taon versus Severino. A couple of former Yankees. Tayon, last two starts, uh, first two starts of the season, three runs in 10 and two thirds. And Severino, he's coming off a bit of a bounce back quality start, or coming off two quality starts. Uh, this is a slide as it leans to the Cubs here. We'll see what Sevy looks like back at home. He's been a bit better at home this year. He's been pitching pretty solid. Uh, Tayon, two good starts, but against two ice cold teams, the Astros and the Marlins. What is he going to do here against the Mets? Uh, tough game all around. Both teams coming off some pretty tough series. Would be a lean here to the Cubs, but ever so slightly, uh, they are Sunday night game. Did not want to back that. And that's what that's what caused the line move. This is your Sunday night team going on the road. Uh, Mets played at home last night, so no travel for them. So you got a little, little extra for the Mets. Um, Mets in extra innings yesterday. Uh, come up with that big win. Cubbies lose a, a, a tough one on Sunday night with a little bloop shot. Um, that's baseball. Cubs just don't play well on the road. Mets are good at home. I just don't make them this high, even with the Sunday night affair. Remember, Sterling Marte, he's missed the last couple of games of bereavement. Uh, supposed to be out one more game and be back tomorrow. Uh, Cubbies are nothing. Depends on the lineups. We have Twins at the White Sox. Twins, they've uh, taken advantage of their week schedule this past week. They've had the White Sox and the Angels, two of your worst teams in baseball, and they took advantage winning all seven of them, scoring uh, 8.1 runs per game. We'll see if that continues again in another series with the White Sox, who have heaten up. Their bats got going in the back end of that series versus the Twins. They continued out of their series with the Rays. They won all three straight, scoring seven runs per game. Uh, granted, Twins own this matchup 11 and won the last 12 meetings. Twins with the pitching edge today. Ryan versus Crochet. Crochet was solid his first couple of starts. Absolutely cracked his last three, uh, especially the last one against the Twins. Uh, pitching edge, Minnesota here. This line, White Sox getting some action after the bat teamed up this past weekend. Uh, they are quote unquote due for some wins. I mean, they were on pace for what a 21 win season, and they get the last three. So uh, we'll see if they can snap that here against Minnesota. Still, I'm looking for the White Sox to keep getting bet. This price to keep dropping uh, could bring some interest here for me for the Twins at a cheaper price. Yeah, but only want the Twins uh, in this one. They, they absolutely own them. Ryan pitching great. Ryan owns them. Crochet getting crushed. Uh, White Sox fresh off a three-game sweep. I don't know how they pulled it off. They were looking like the worst team. Look, with their recent outburst of runs scored, they're still 30th. Scoring 2.75 runs per game. Don't want nothing to do with the White Sox, even as a home dog in this spot. Uh, they've gotten a little of the money on the overnight. This game down to around 150 to 155. And we got Rays at Brewers. Rays just got swept by that White Sox team. They've now dropped six of seven. Brewers, they got absolutely cracked the last two days by the Yankees, losing those by 30, and eight, 30 to 8 combined. Uh, as far as the matchup history, Rays took two of three last year. 
Papoit versus Wilson. Going to give Papoit the uh, pitching edge. Three of his last four starts, quality starts. Wilson hasn't really gone too far in any of his outings. Just no interest in Tampa Bay. I mean, how could you want a race team just got swept by the White Sox? I'm sure they're going to be looking to snap that skid here. Uh, but this is Milwaukee or nothing. Line opened up closer to what I make this game. And if all the actions come for Tampa Bay, starting to lean to the Brewers here in this one. Yeah. Um, I, I lean to Tampa Bay off the opening number because of the pitching matchup. Uh, I like the way Papai's pitched his last few games. You've got Wilson, uh, a, a spot starter, basically. Not going to go deep into the game. Uh, so I gave T Tampa Bay a little bit of an edge over there. Brewers have fallen off a little bit since their hot start, and they've played really well on the road, not so much at home. So in this game, uh, my lean was to the Rays, but I'm certainly not there now. This game, the Sharps have bet it. They've turned what was a, uh, a minus 120 favorite on Milwaukee to a pick em game. I think that's where the game should have been. Like I said, between 120 pick em just wasn't enough for me to get a nice cold Tampa Bay. They're on the road again. Milwaukee was home again. Not The pitching edge didn't give me enough to go there, so I'll lay off this one. We got Phillies at Angels. Phillies got <laughs> done for us yesterday against the Padres. They're red hot 11-2 and two their last 13. Alec Bohm hitting 500 in that stretch. He's been red hot. Uh, Sanchez versus Canning. Sanchez, he was roughed up his last time out prior to that. A couple of quality starts. And Canning, he was miserable his first few starts. A bit better his last couple starts. Not amazing. Five runs and 10 and a third. And he has had uh, some rough goes against some good teams. Expect that to continue. I mean, this is Phillies or nothing. Angels, second worst home record in baseball. They had the worst AL record at home. Uh, this would be Phillies or nothing. Nothing can get me to go against this hot team. And if that price goes any cheaper, I'd be willing to lay the juice on it. Yeah, <clears throat> you guys know us. We don't like to lay juice. Um, but Phillies right now, early this season, I said they were a little overvalued. Well, they took it right back the other way. Too much of a swing. A little undervalued, especially these last couple of days. Same thing here. Phillies as hot as any team in the NBA, in, in, in the MLB and Angels dropped nine and ten. We thought they were going to be decent, seventy to seventy-five wins. Right now they're looking like a sixty-win team. Uh, Phillies are nobody in this one. Give them the pitching edge, even though Sanchez got a little bit hit. How about that Philly pitching staff? Where did this come from? Uh, Suarez his lights out. You've got Nola. You've got Wheeler. Uh, Turnbull coming over. Sanchez, who's not bid, is your fifth starter or maybe sixth. Now that you got Tijon Walker coming back, so Philly loaded in the in the in the pitching department. Yep. Um, and then this those bats are starting to heat up as they should. Philly and nobody. Let's see where this game goes. We got Pirates at Oakland. Uh, like in Pittsburgh in this one, another one of these games. Sharps hit the home dog here, but it's a little too much in my eyes. Pirates have been ice cold. Three and ten their last 13, one and five their last six on the road. The bats haven't been doing any damage, scoring almost two runs a game. Oakland playing solid ball, three and one their last four, but all on the road. They're still a bad home team. Four and nine at home this season, scoring just 2.6 runs per game. And pitching has got to go to Falter here. Uh, Boyle, last two starts, nine runs, eight hits, eight walks, and nine innings. And Falter, been really solid in the month of April. He had a rough first start in March. Since then, 2-1, 1.57 1 ERA. Uh, this game opened up 130. He's only gone the other way, gone lower and lower. Uh, again, this is another one of those going to keep on watching. I want Pirates. This line keeps dropping. Yeah, Pittsburgh's bad. Oakland sucks. Uh, hey, we got lucky. The price was right. We'll take a fucking two-run shot in the ninth to take the win. But they're going to make the cross-country trip um, from, from Baltimore back home. Uh, you got Pittsburgh playing in San Fran, again, right across the bay uh, from where they had to go to. So very little travel. Pitt needs a W. Got, this is a get-right spot. Fault is going to get the pitching edge in this one. Uh, this game has dropped. The shops are on Oakland. Oakland playing better. Than we expected them, especially on the road. Not so much at home. Still the lowest scoring team in home games. 2.6.2 runs per game. Pit or nobody. Let's see how low the, 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 not look, the number drops in this one. Then we have Dodgers at D-backs. Dodgers lose that last game at Toronto. They had won their prior six. scoring 6.3 their last seven games. Uh, D-backs, they get a win last night to avoid the sweep at Seattle. They went four and six on their road trip. 
Dodgers had dominated this regular season matchup for many years. t back started to kind of chip at that last season. The Dodgers won 8 of 13, and then everyone knows t back swept them in the NLDS in three games, and none of them were competitive games. I mean, you had Kershaw who got jumped on in the first inning, Lance Lynn who got jumped on in the first inning. Uh, just really, they were never in that series. We'll see if they come with some playoff revenge today. Uh, Sharps have been on Arizona. Don't really know why with that any lower. I mean, this is a worth the take here for the Dodgers. Uh, Paxton going, he's been decent. I mean, he's had some bad walks, but even with that, he's on his Dylan, uh, sorry, he's on his Blake Snell action here. 11 walks, but still not getting roughed up. Four runs in nine and two thirds, uh, pitching pretty solid, dancing around raindrops, getting into and out of trouble. Henry going for Arizona, coming off a quality start, uh, but in his two home starts, 0 and 1, 10.80 ERA. This is Dodgers or nothing. I know more road juice. I keep saying that today. But it is, and just with this number, it was opened up 150 on the overnight. That's closer to where I'm at. It's now all the way down to where are his lows, 130, 128 here. Dodgers are nothing here. Okay, so I can make a case for either of these two, two teams. So I thought 150 was high, even with the playoff revenge. And I'm definitely, don't worry about it. Dodgers are thinking playoff revenge. They're, they're coming to town, to Arizona to get a W. Uh, they The bats had got hot, and they were everything was going great up until yesterday in that – this is what we call a look-ahead game. It's one of the reasons we bet the A's yesterday, Orioles in the look-ahead spot had Yankees coming into today, big battle for first place. Same thing happened to the Dodgers last night. So I'm looking for them to get their bats going, especially against Henry, who absolutely sucks at home, just can't get it out at home. Um, but for that part, Paxton, 11 walks. That's not good, especially that the D-backs hit 319 off lefties. You're going to put some guys on. you got some guys that are going to do some hit. Um, playoff revenge. I made it higher than it is now. Not as high as the opening. So I could see where the Sharps jumped on the opener. But not to bury it down this low. Now I fully feel it's too low. And that's where I am with this game. We'll see where this game settles out. And if anybody's sitting out on a Monday after a long weekend. Now, Will Smith sat out yesterday for the Dodgers. Expect him back in the lineup. We'll take a look later, guys. As always, we're on top of every injury and every lineup. Then we have Braves going on to Seattle. They get a walk-off yesterday with Riley as they get it done against Cleveland. Uh, seven and two homestand there for the Braves. Mariners, they drop it yesterday to the D-backs, 3-2. They are now 9-3 and three their last 12, but that's pretty cold. Uh, in their last four games, hitting just 161. Freed versus Miller. Miller was pitching really solid. He was 3-0, 0.47 ERA in his prior three starts. And last time out, uh, gave up two runs, four hits, four walks, and four innings versus Texas. But really, if you look at his matchup history, that's just a bad matchup for him. They absolutely annihilated him last year. For his standards, that was a good start against Texas. So uh, Miller's been pitching pretty solid his last four starts. Freed, they keep getting it done with him. Last time out, though, complete game shutout against the Marlins. Does he have a little bit of a letdown from that? Uh, obviously revving up the engine, you, the innings usage there. This is home dog Mariners or nothing. Miller been solid. We'll see if he can get it done against the Braves. Free starter off the year in rough fashion. It looked kind of ugly. And then when they lost Strider, you're like, uh oh, Strider out. They lost right from the year before. Now Freed's not looking good. He's kind of turning around these last few outings and absolutely dominated Miami. Don't know how difficult that is. Maybe me and Ben got a shot to shut down Miami the way they're going right now. Yep. Um, Atlanta, southeast, all the way to Seattle, uh, the northwest. Long, only the Marlins or Tampa could have a possible longer trip than the Braves are going to have today. Throw on top of that two double headers in their last two games, three double, uh, not double headers, I'm sorry, two extra inning games, their last two games, three extra inning games in their last four. So uh, you might have a little bit of a tired team going all the way up to the northwest. Um, to get the job done. The only thing is Seattle can't hit. They can't score. Um, on a nice little homestand right now, but Marin is now, uh, even on this, three, uh, on this homestand, they're scoring 3.8 runs per game in their last four, hitting one, six. That's 161. Um, oh. Tough to back a team against the Braves, the best hitting team in baseball. They score the most runs. 6.45 runs per game in road games. Tough to get on Seattle when they're not scoring against a team like the Braves. 
Yeah, I believe it was on Saturday. They had their three runs, but it was three runs on four hits. I mean, that's a tough night there. The dish, we'll see what they get going here. That's, uh, in this that's the night Atlanta. we had Ciccioni against them. Arizona kid pitched a real good game. Uh, we were down one nothing when he came out. Uh, that's just baseball. Seattle, another one of those West Coast pitchers, ballparks. No. Uh, expect more of the same um, for Seattle. Can the Braves get it going there? They seem to get it going everywhere, although Cleveland did a hell of a job. Uh, pitching against them this weekend. And we have one more game on the card. Reds at San Diego. Reds coming off a loss yesterday at Texas. They've now dropped three of four, scoring three a game, hitting 176. Uh, it's 500 ball on the road so far this season. Padres, bats have been going a bit better, almost five runs per game, but they've lost four in a row. They ran into that buzzsaw. That's the Phillies right now. Uh, Lodolo versus Waldron this season. Waldron. His first quality start this season, nonetheless, coming at Coors Field. Uh, I guess that's the blessing of having a knuckleballer at Coors. And then you have Lodolo going. They won all three of his starts. Last one, though, was his worst of the season, but it was still against the Red Hot Phillies. He's one of the teams that has one of those wins in the last – one of the two wins in their last 13 games against the Phillies. Uh, this is Reds or nothing for me. Waldron, horrible home stats, 0-2, 9.35. Yeah, uh, Lodolo's been doing a great job since coming back. Uh, Waldron, the knuckleballer at cause that's a that's a weird you know, usually you go up to cause you can get lit up. Kyle Rogers hasn't been hitting anywhere though. Um, just can't make Cincy the favorite on the road. It's bad San Diego's playing, you've got a Cincy team just three runs per game, only hitting 176 uh, in that span. So I think the number's right where it should be. Uh, tough card today, guys, and that's why we don't have a bet just yet. Again, like I said, yesterday. Uh, 11 30, 12 o'clock. Guys in the chat, no bets today? Question mark. What we wound up with six bets yesterday, we had five on Saturday. Be ready, the bets come out when the line is right. If there's a break in the lineup, if there's an injury, that, that's when we make the bet, guys. That we don't bet for entertainment, we bet to make money. We made a lot of it this week. Yep, and as we told you guys throughout these breakdowns, a lot of these lines starting to move down one direction, and uh, if they go any further, could be some spots opened up. You guys want any of the bets we get out today or later on this week because you guys know we won't be back till Friday. Sign up on MassaEdge.com or download the Massa Edge app. Coming off a very big weekend, a very solid week. We'll see if we can keep that going this week, John. That's it, guys. Uh, big week. Got a big card today for a Monday. Um, got some NBA going. Can end the, another series tonight with OKC. We'll see how that all all breaks down. Um, just one more reminder: as I said, we bet when the line is right. Like you take yesterday Sunday. I know we're going to bet the A's. We're just seeing how high it goes. That's when we bet the number. Uh, we do have to get these bets out, and I try to get them out no more than fifteen minutes before game time. And that kind of screwed us. It was a loser anyway. But I got as soon as I got the Rockies bet out, just the game we were gonna we were gonna go against Valdez. First thought back from the injury list, scheduled to throw 70, 75 pitches in Mexico City, where the ball's gonna fly out. So we we know we're gonna take 190, 195, 200 in that game. As soon as we made that bet in those last 10 minutes, that line flew against us. But I've got to give you guys at least enough time to make that bet. Again, we try to get them out as, as early as possible. I may try to get these games out. Against teams like the Braves, the Dodgers, where that late square money is all one-sided. So uh, stay on top of your toes. Maybe some late notifications this week. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe below. Let's have another big week. Let's make some money. Let's make some money.